All right, today we're going to be taking apart the 97B from CZ. This is their big boy 45 cal. Um, of course, all steel, uh, beautiful CZ. So we'll start uh, first uh, dropping the mag. One thing, my, my biggest gripe, my only gripe really with it, besides the god-awful trigger from the factory, is the magazine release. So I'm going to work on, I know some people have made, they make extended magazines for the for these and I know some people have cut the uh, tap the hole and put a shadow 2 style button on it so I'm gonna work on a few of those um, or making one for mine and if it turns out okay I might end up um, seeing if people are interested in them and then maybe selling them if you know it's a profitable you know 15 20 bucks and it's not gonna be outrageously priced so I've seen much the pricing and everything goes I'm working on a few projects now but so if you happen to be interested in one of those for the 97, let me know. Um, see if there's any actual demand for them. But uh, so let's go ahead and start with the uh, start with the mag. This has got um, Armory Craft base plate, so of course you just push down on the, the button and slide your base base plate off. Um, next, we're going to want to start with field stripping. So we're just going to make sure our gun's empty. We're going to pull down, pull back the slide, so we line up our two lines in the rear. And then we'll take something on the other side, magazine, or I use the screwdriver most of the time, and just pop the button out, pull them back, and pull that out of there. Now, a lot of those are tight, so if you have to get a small flathead back there, just be careful. Or a small plastic, something that's plastic that can... Um, not scratch up your frame so we'll go ahead and start with the slide so the 97s are a little bit different they use a bushing in the front so first thing you're going to want to do is remove your recoil spring and the recoil spring guide put that off to the side from there you're going to want to unscrew your bushing in the front and yours may be tight um it may just be loose. I've already kind of loosened this one slightly. So we'll take the bushing out. Once we do that, we can remove our big barrel. Next, we can go ahead and remove our firing pin and firing pin block by driving out the pin here in the rear of the frame. Now, if your pin, this is the, of course, notorious pin um, that CZ uh, just won't fix or what, um, but Everyone knows it's a crappy pin that breaks over time. So I re recommend replacing it with a pin from Cajun or many of the other companies, which I've already done here. I've replaced a few parts in this gun already. Start driving that pin out. drove that pin out here we're gonna go ahead and keep our punch in keep our finger over the back just in case and then now that we've got the pin out we'll go ahead and push down on the firing pin block and allow the firing pin itself to just come out when you do that your firing pin block is going to want to pop out with it so just put these up now this does have the macarbo spring set in it um, definitely helped with the trigger you know for 30 bucks Plus you get the pin. Um, it's it's hard to beat. It really really makes this trigger better. Um, not you know a whole lot, but quite a bit better. Um, from about ten pounds down to eight pounds. From about four and a half to five pounds down to about four to three and a half. So um, definitely helps with the double action, smoothing it up. So now we've got our firing pin blocker, uh, firing pin re removed. Let's go ahead and remove the um, loaded chamber indicator. Now I'm gonna use. small snap on set because I don't have the T handle on that size. So we'll go ahead and remove this hex screw. 
right here. Once we've done that, you want to keep your finger over, you can see, I'm going to make sure it doesn't come out, but right there, right in front of the breech face, right above the firing pin, you got the small pin that pushes up through the plate in the top, so all you're going to do now is just kind of push this off, but keep that your finger underneath there, because it'll want to fly out the bottom. So you have your spring, your little plunger, and the little plate itself. From there, you can do the extractor if you're wanting to. This extractor is staked from the bottom, so what you're going to want to do is drive it out from the top down. So I'll take a small punch. to keep my thumb over the extractor as I pull out the punch and from there the extractor work its way out and then the extractor spring kind of canted at an angle in there it will come out and now besides the sights the uh, slides completely stripped so let's go ahead and put it off to the side Next, we can start working on the frame. First thing we're gonna wanna do is remove our grips. It's got these uh, awesome orange grips on there which just make it look that much better. But these do um, come stock with a steel grip. I believe some of the older ones came with just uh, the standard crappy CZ rubber grips. Some of the old 97 Bs, but I'm pretty sure most of the new Bs and BDs come with these uh, same style, just black. Okay, so the first thing you can go ahead and do to start is remove your um, metal sheet, piece of sheet metal that's inside the uh, frame here. So just go ahead and put it on your block. You're going to want to drive out this front pin here. Once you've done that, off to the side and you can keep it in there because it is wrapped kind of underneath the plunger and you can drive out that pin there too I'm gonna say drive out it's not in there tight but just enough to because there's gonna be so much pressure on it I like to have the punch in there to keep it from walking itself out so now that my punch is in there capturing it I'm just gonna put my thumb over it pull the punch out down let the, the plate come out and then I can let the plunger and the hammer spring come out with it and that's gonna help everything later on getting your hammer and everything out just go ahead and do it now it makes it easier so so next thing we're gonna have I'm gonna try to zoom in so if you look let me grab a pick here You look right here this is your sear spring and it double wraps under comes up the back but this leg here this right here lays on the safety that goes all the way across so what you're going to want to do is get a little pick or a small flathead in there and just you're just going to pick up on that spring ever so slightly and as you do over here on your right side if you have the fingernails push it out and you should be able to push it out enough with your fingernails. Nope, see mine didn't. There you go. 
just pull it, push it out either, or pull it out enough to where the, the spring rests and it's not in its little groove. Once you've done that, just keep your hand over the sear block itself, your thumb, and then just pull out the uh, safety. From there, your whole sear block now can just come out. So this is just a safety model. From there, inside, you're going to have your spring and detent, which rest right there in the frame. You can see it. It's a little uh, black plunger detent and then a spring. So you can just grab a needle nose, pull that out. From there, this pin that's in the frame, you just want to slide it up. Ever so slightly to just get it up, push it up through, and it's going to pop up here in the frame. Once you've done that, you should be able to grab it with a, either just flip it over and let it fall out, or just take it out like that. What that does is that allows you now to take your hammer pin and push it out from the opposite side. Like so. Obviously after that you can pull out your hammer. If you want to remove the disconnector you can drive this, oh, this pin out here. If you want to remove the strut you can drive out this pin here. They are very tight pins. You're going to need a um, starter punch usually to get those out. From there you have your trigger. Um, I'm going to zoom back out for that. Now your trigger pin more than likely is just a standard roll pin. This is a floating trigger pin as they call it. Because um, I take apart these a lot so I always like putting floating pins in just so it's easier to get in and out. With those usually you can give it one good push out. Pull that pin out. And then from there, I got my punch in there. I'm going to keep my finger in there just so that uh, return spring doesn't go flying. And I'm going to pull out my punch. And then I'll be able to pull the return spring. Also, with my carbo part. And the trigger bar itself will come out. Pretty simple. If you want to remove the trigger itself, just, of course, drive out the pin. To keep the video short, I'm not going to need to do that. Uh, let's see, next, I forgot, I'm going to need... The right size flathead. That one should work. If you're wanting to remove your um, trigger spring and your magazine release, this is what you're going to need to do. So you're going to see the flathead screw that's down in there, ridge screw like that. And they want to get you a nice, good, flat uh, bit in there. You're going to slowly, don't do that. Oh, look at that. That one's too thin. See, this is why you use the appropriate bits. I grabbed the first one I saw. And up bending them. So let me find my little bit better one here. That one looks too thick, but I'll try it. That is the importance of all ground bits and using the correct bit size. I usually have all this stuff uh, out already, but I didn't think about this as I did the uh, before I started the video. Nope. Actually, one of the littler, thin ones. There we go. This might be the one I normally use. Okay, so now we're going to back that screw out. Let that screw fall out. And then from there you can pull up on the trigger spring. 
just like that. Pushing this junk out of the way. And then from there, the mag yeah. magazine release spring, you can see how it works, how it sits down in there. You can pull it out with a pick or what other instrument you decide to use. I typically use a hooked spring like this, or sometimes I will start with just a my big there it is, flathead like this that has a hook on the end, and I'll get it, and I'll grab one of the ends and just start to pull it up, kind of push in on the magazine release to help. grab the hook and let's go ahead and pull that spring out of there it's gonna come out just like that from there the magazine release will fall out and you have a completely stripped frame on your 97b so um, what we'll do now is go ahead and do the sear block I'll show you how that all works and goes back together and zoom in for it. Make sure I get the right angle here. Okay, so sear blocks are really easy on these. Um, they're even easier if it doesn't have the firing pin block. That's actually the hardest part, really. Um, so you just have one pin here going all the way through, and that's holding your firing pin block lifter. Watch out because it does have a very small spring controlling it. You have your sear itself and the sear spring. So you can go ahead and push that pin all the way out. Keep your thumb over everything if you're wanting to just pull it all apart. Pull it out. And then from there, kind of let everything just fall. You should have four pieces fall out of the sear block. You have your um, firing pin block lifter spring, your lifter itself your sear and your sear spring and your sear block of course so overall fairly simple getting the uh all right so now we're gonna put the firing pin block lever and spring back in so i had it and then i uh i slipped and i pulled the pin out too far so now we're gonna start over so what i normally do is go ahead and start the pin in through the side that this spring is going to stay on and then I'm going to grab my needle nose and I'm going to take the spring like this and just go ahead and get the spring started on the pin. And then lift this leg up so it all just sits in there. Hopefully it focuses like that. So you got one end of the spring laying over here, one end of the spring laying over here. And what I do is usually we'll push the pin Keep the spring where it's supposed to be. Push the pin out a little farther. If I push the spring back on, it's okay. And then grab the firing pin block, and it's going to go in like this. The groove inwards. Obviously, the spring is going to be resting on this groove. And then what I do is I put it. that and then you're not done yet because you have now you have to lift that spring up and get it onto that little groove so I'm always putting tension on this pin with one of my fingers just so it doesn't slide so what I'll normally do is go ahead and put it down on the bench get a pick in there and then just raise up that spring enough where I can grab it With my index finger here. Now I've got it with my uh, fingernail. You can push the firing pin block lever all the way in and then let go of that spring and it'll fall in its little groove where it should be. So if I 
keep pressure against it and I lift it up, you don't want to fall back down automatically. So now what you want to do is you want to get the sear block in there to keep it kind of held together. So just keep your finger pushing pressure towards and then back the pin out almost all the way like this. And then you're going to take the sear block like this from the bottom. So look the way I'm holding everything. And you're going to slide that up. from the bottom I've almost got it but the pin is still just too far once I get it up there still kind of keeping pressure on that firing pin block spring I'm gonna line it up push my pin through for now just hold it like that and I can still make sure that the spring is has its rearward tension like it should and now you can mess with putting this spring in which is easier so obviously a long leg goes towards the front that's what's capturing that's where it sits when you have that when your safety is all the way through. That's what keeps it from coming out. That's all that keeps it from coming out, really, besides the detent lever. And then what I do is I go ahead and push the pin. Same thing, I'm just going to back it out just enough where I can get that spring in there. But everything's still held together and then I can take that spring usually just drop it down in there and then I'll start pushing the pin through and then I might not have to manipulate the spring just a little bit usually not too much until I get it to go through the spring you can see I'm just a little far forward here I'm just gonna mess with the sear a little bit till I get it popped all the way through now she's all back together verify that you have your springs working there and here and your sear blocks back together so now we can go ahead and put the magazine release back in we want to go ahead and drop it through Um, I guess I didn't show you really how it works, but so it basically sits in there like this. These two springs are compressed behind like that. So one way or another, there's different ways of doing it. I don't have my yeah, I do. I will either do it one way or another usually. I will either get one leg take vice or uh, needle nose Make sure it goes forward you want the, the head facing forward I'll either go ahead and get one leg started in there if possible sometimes this works sometimes it doesn't on one of the ledges hold it in there and then grab my flat head With the groove and push the other leg yeah there we go that's how I'll do it I forgot now okay all right put one leg down in there grab it through the hole and then I'll take my whoops let's see what I'm doing here got my finger on this one I'm just going to take this and slide the other side over. And it'll be like that. But you want to make sure that it's not sticking up, so you might have to lift it up just enough to be able to slide the magazine release in. 
kind of past its point. See it's too high. So I'll just lift it up just a little bit here. Slide the magazine release in. Get it into the middle. Look down in there, make sure my groove's gonna line up, and then I'll just push with my thumb until it goes down into its slot. And now my magazine release should work. Easy peasy. Next, I'll put the uh, trigger bar spring in here. It's gonna go in like this. Hooks down. Usually you can just put it in and then squeeze one side. And then just kind of work its way down on top of that spring. Until it sets like that. And then you want to get your screw. And start it. Usually. Sometimes I can start with my finger, but. gonna be it's gonna start screwing in there you're gonna feel it tighten up where the the ridges are catching into the metal you don't want to over torque it I feel so it starts grabbing those and slightly turn you don't want to really force that it's kind of a feeling kind of thing all right now we can go ahead and put the trigger in drop your oh, let's not do that sorry first thing you want to do is crap and bring a slave pin the one thing I needed I wonder if that'll work oh, I think it will okay so what you're gonna want to do is put your trigger return spring back in the trigger this short leg just goes up in the front right here and then push down on the push it down in there and get the, the hole lined up and then if you don't have a pre-cut slave pin we're going to try the uh, firing pin block or the hammer pin spring or pin and see if it'll go in there enough I think it did I think I've done this before and what you're doing is you're holding that together so the spring doesn't come out and then you'll drive it out with the pin so I'm going to push it through It's probably close enough. So that's what you're basically doing. So you want to find a pin. If you're ordered a trigger return spring, it usually comes with the slave pin, or a lot of these you know, carbo kit came with one. Um, I have six of them laying around for CZs, but of course none outside. Um, but it looks like the other pin will work. So you're basically just capturing that spring until you can put it down in the gun because trying to put the trigger down in there and then the spring um, and trying to hold it all together while you get the, the trigger pin through is a pain. So that's why they use the slave pin. Um, if, if uh, I guess I didn't do this uh, when it's planned out for this video as I normally am, but um, any of my other CZ videos have the exact same thing. All CZs use the same system. Um, so you have to look at one, but hopefully you get the idea. So now what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to, the top of that spring sits in that groove. And I'm going to try to line it all up. I 
to get low because I can't really see it. So. more fair so normally I wouldn't have to use a hammer to drive it through but just because it wasn't in centered exactly where it needed to be I'm just gonna tap it ever so slightly and then I got my pen back so that pen does work um, not as efficiently as I'd like but now I can push that pen the rest of the way in get it seated where I like my trigger part or my return spring is sitting where it needs to all right not too bad um let's see next we're going to uh let's put the hammer back in so you're going to want to grab your hammer spring or hammer and strut put it down into its hole make sure your disconnector here laps over the trigger bar or wait no don't do that yet you know what? Doesn't matter with these. That's all right. It doesn't matter. Some of the other CZs, it matters. Go ahead and hook your on, and then get your uh, hole lined up with your hammer. Put your pin through. From there, get that little uh, pin out, a little slave pin. You can go ahead and drop it down into the hole into the frame. This part can be fun sometimes. As easy as it is, the, uh, it likes to be a pain to get down in there because it's kind of at an angle. So, Magnetic little fucker. That might help me actually. There we go. All right, so she's back where she needs to be. Um, next thing would be to do is put the sear back in, sear block. So. What you're going to do, well, now first you're going to want to put your safety selector back in. So it's going to go back in like this into the frame. And what I do is usually I grab these needle nose, take it, and then go ahead and get it. It's got a groove it sits in. Get it in there, put my finger over the spring and just kind of let it. back into its little slot like that all right so now we're ready to put our safety back in <laughs> um, so what I do is I don't know if I yeah I don't know where I cut but um, sear block hammers in got my pin through just gonna set your sear block in like so you're gonna grab your safety Push her back until the hole lines up. You want to slide her through. Now, once you get it to this point here, usually you're going to have to lift up on the spring. Usually, you can get it with your fingernail. Um, until it gets right to a certain point. And then from here, you're going to have to push. If you look real close, it's going to be hard to see, but you're going to need to push that safety detent back slightly so you see the two little grooves 
All right, it's hard to. All right, here. I'm gonna push those back as I push the button in. And it'll clip itself in like that. Now, you just wanna make sure that your spring gets flipped back over into its spot, so now it can't come out. And you should have working action. Um, let's see, go ahead and put in the hammer spring and strut. Now, I've been working on a different way of doing that. But. So I'm gonna go ahead and put I'm going to go ahead and push my strut in. And then put this the shield in place first. As I do that, I can push down enough, I should be able to slide my pin through. I'm gonna go ahead and put this top one in first. So that's out of the way. Now I'm gonna take my strut, I'm gonna push down. Get it as flat as I can and then slide my pin through. Sometimes I have to use the edge of my to get her all the way through. So I'll pop back out the other side. Everything's working there. Uh, I'm ready to put the uh, grips on the frame and go back to the slide, and we'll be we'll be done. So frame is complete, slide, next. Okay, so first thing we're going to want to put back in is going to be the uh, loaded chamber indicator. We're going to have three pieces here. So what I do, i got to remember which way it goes back in. What I normally will do is go ahead and get it started in its groove, flip it upside down. Or you know what? I'm going to do this differently. Grab my pin. Go ahead and take it like this. Push in on it. Then start it. Which is kind of awkward. And then you end up losing the spring. I never should have did it the other way. Take two. It's easier to get it started and then trying to put it through. Fingers are fat. Yeah, it's easier to do it like this. Spring in. Spring and plunger. Pull.
the spring and plunger. Grab it. Put it in this little hole. Push up straight evenly on it, slide it in. It'll click down into its place. I don't know why I just didn't do that from the beginning. I knew that's what I needed to do. And then now get your set screw ready. Put it in. Push backwards on it just in case. Okay, now we're going to want to do our extractor. Let's go ahead and throw your extractor spring in. So again, it's going to go at somewhat of an angle. Take your extractor itself. Get it where it needs to go. And then normally what I do is I grab my small punch and I stick it through just to kind of capture it. And then I'll back it out enough to start the pin. As I get it to that point, I can usually just happened enough that it'll start to hold the extractor I can remove the pin and then I can push in on the extractor still I'm trying to find the sweet spot here Finding it yet. Seriously, you're going to give me trouble now. Got to get it in the right spot. And from there, I'll take a little bit bigger of a punch and just drive it down. And then, give me a small one. Make sure it's completely flush and not sticking up at all. <laughs> Never took the uh, hammer, or, yeah firing pin spring out well nice for you to arrive next we're going to go ahead and put your firing pin back in and we're done so what i do is go ahead and drop your firing pin block down in there push up on it far enough and then you're going to drop the firing pin in keep pushing up on the firing pin block push the pin in and then you can let off the firing pin block and it'll capture itself to a certain degree and then what you need to do is get your pin usually you want the cut out up or the end of the pin roll pin I guess up I can typically get it started do that I'll grab a, the bigger punch I have 
push in on the firing pin block and then slide this punch through. That's going to capture the firing pin in where it needs to be. And then I can start driving my pin through as I knock out the punch. Now that I've got it captured enough, use this punch here. up on both sides where I like it to be like that now your slides done go ahead and drop your barrel back in bushing and recoil spring. Now you're ready to test. Um, you always want to safety check all functions, so then we're back, single action pull. I mean, look at that. So much better than the factory. I mean, for 30 bucks, if you're if you're thinking about it, I highly recommend the Macarbo set. I've done a lot of Cajun sets, and for a couple hundred bucks, the trigger doesn't get a lot better than this. I hate to say it, but it really doesn't. Um, it's nice to have the different hammer. You do lose a lot of the reset um, in the Cajun sets, but you're also paying a lot of money. I mean, this double action pull was atrocious. I could barely pull it with one finger. Um, that made it a lot better. So, been test all our functions. Safety's working. Magazine release. All right. And that's the CZ ninety seven B. Um, if you guys, uh, if you have one of these, let me know what you think about it. It's a freaking awesome uh, shooter. Um, if you're interested in a you know Shadow two style mag release, let me know. I don't know of anybody making them. Um, offhand, I know of a couple of people who have, but I figured, you know, if, uh, some uh, CZ guys out there that want them, you know, nobody's making them, uh, maybe I could if it was, you know, worth it and not going to be super expensive for people. But if not, I'm going to make one for myself, so hopefully we'll see that next time. And I'm also working on maybe starting some uh, Kydex making, holster making for some things. So let me know what you think about the 97B, any other guns you want to see done um, that are readily accessible. I'll uh, see what I can do and we'll uh, see you next time on the gun bench. Thanks.